Hello, welcome back to Cinema Burger, where I bring you movie reviews from a different perspective. We're here with the final movie for 13 Nights of Halloween, and it is Paranormal Activity Next of Kin. This is the seventh movie in the Paranormal Activity series, and it is technically a reboot, and it was released directly on Paramount+. Plus. Now, it was written by Christopher Landon, who wrote Paranormal Activity 2, 3, 4, and the Marked Ones. He's also written Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse and Freaky and Happy Death Day to You. So he's a decent writer. Now this movie follows some girl who was orphaned as a kid. She gets a, a email or a call from a family member saying that they were Amish and that they want to meet. So she goes with her two friends and... Uh, they go to the Amish country and uh, meet the family, and this movie is like partly found footage, but also not. Now, all the other paranormal activity movies have had like a very low budget, because it's all like from practical cameras and stuff. But Next of Kin does some more special effects type things, and with the low budget, you can clearly see that, and it kind of suffers, I think. So they go meet, like, the Amish people, and, uh, there's, like, a church that they're not allowed to go into, and they find, like, where the mom lived, like, the room she was in. There's, like, at one point there's an old woman sitting by a fire, and she's, like, skinning her hand with a potato peeler, and they kind of never, like, mention it ever. But it turns out that... They think that these people on this farm are worshipping this demon Asmodeus, which is from the Book of Tobit. I looked it up. Now, the Book of Tobit, or Toby, is the name of the demon in the other six Paranormal Activity movies. So that's an interesting connection to the other ones. Maybe Asmodeus and Toby are the same demon, we don't know, but it's a good bet. So it turns out that these people on this farm are trying to keep this demon, like, locked up by putting them into bodies of women so it doesn't escape. So you think, like, this family or people on this farm are evil because you also see, like, oh, they find a letter from the mom who uh, says, like, you can't have my baby, whatever. So... They think originally that they they worship this demon, but it turns out they're trying to keep it locked up. Now, under the church, there's this, like, hole goes 100 feet deep. And there's a creature under there that's, I guess, possessed by the demon. And there's a couple of practical effects which look okay, but there's other times where it's special effects and it looks terrible due to a low budget. Now, I don't remember any of the other, the main characters' names because they're very forgettable. But it's interesting how the movie doesn't end with killing every character in the movie. Like, one of the friends of the girl dies, but the other two escape. But since they stop, they have to save the girl from being, like, the next vessel of the demon. So once they stop that, the demon escapes. So by the end of the movie, like, the... It's like the whole farm is on fire, and it's like unintentionally hilarious because like there's people on fire, there's someone with like a pitchfork in them. It looks like something out of like a parody movie or something. So by the end, the girl and the one friend escape, but the demon who possessed it turns out to be the cousin, whatever, gets in the car. As he leaves, makes people kill themselves, and just drives away, and the movie ends. So, as a movie, it was, like, okay. Like, it's not really a found footage movie. Half of it is, um, like, shot in regular camera. They, a couple of times, do, like, uh, they do it to black screen. They show, like, night one, March, whatever. They kind of forget about doing that. So, it is a little bit different in terms of the other Paranormal Activity movies. But I don't know if I'd recommend this because the other the other six movies were like a complete story. This has connections to it. It's kind of more, I feel like it's more like a spin-off rather than a reboot. 
since it is on Paramount Plus, if you have that, you can just watch it. I guess if you like nothing else to do, maybe watch it if you like the other movies. But I give this like a 2 out of 5 burgers, maybe. Just because it suffers from trying to ha do more with a smaller budget. That's its biggest problem. While it's trying to like stray away from the paranormal activity formula, I don't know if that worked. Like, this could have been in a whole nother movie and not been related to paranormal activity, and I think it might have done better with that. But apparently there's another paranormal activity movie on IMDb, which is a directly related to the other previous six. There's also I mean, there's also a documentary they put on Paramount Plus about the making of the other paranormal activity movies. Which might be more interesting than this movie. But, uh... There was a lot of instances where you think they're going to kill a character and they don't. So that was interesting, I thought. But it's a weak entry into the series. It tries to do different things, but it, I don't think it works. So I don't know. But, uh, that wraps it up for this 13 Nights of Halloween this year. There definitely could have been some better movies out there. Amazon could have done better with these Bloomhouse movies. But, uh, there were some pretty good ones in terms of antlers and, uh, some fun stuff like the Lego Halloween special. But we'll return next month of November with regularly scheduled movies, things like Last Night in Soho, Eternals, and so on and so forth. But have a happy Halloween. I'm Scott Berger, and I'll see you next month.